What is up, everybody? Well, well, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. This is Overlanding Now. And today, we're going to be talking all about the Gladiator. All right, so the reason I'm kind of doing this video is because if you've been watching the channel, you see that there's a Subaru Outback Wilderness in our garage now, and it's taken a lot of the showtime away from the Gladiator. And that's only because there's a lot of stuff to do with it to get it ready for the next trip, to get it ready for where we're headed. Um, and whenever you get a new vehicle, you have to just tear it apart, and there's tons of things that need to be accomplished, and that's where we're at. We're in that process. So the Gladiator's not going anywhere by this vehicle, is hands down my favorite vehicle I've ever owned. It is the most capable, rugged, awesome family adventure vehicle I could ever imagine. Um, but right now, I just have to put a little bit more time into the Outback Wilderness. So, But going through this with you guys kind of reinvigorates my excitement to get this thing back out on the trail. So what I want to talk about are just some things that... Some things that I, I'm changing, some things that I like, some things that I don't like, some things that I think will be helpful for you guys if you're looking to do something like this. And uh, we'll kind of talk through the items that I hate and what I love and we'll get to it. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing I'm going to talk about is the Smart Cap. Now, if you guys have followed the channel for a while, you know that I put the Smart Cap on last year. And I'm going to be honest, this is probably one of my favorite modifications that I've done so far. So as far as the smart cap can, is concerned, it's rock solid. It is definitely something that you should consider if you have any type of truck and you're looking for a hard shell. Um, no water, no dust. Yeah, that's a lie. You get some dust, but I, I don't think all dust is preventable, so it doesn't really matter. But it hasn't leaked any water, no issues with it. The only problem I have with the smart cap is the locks i think the locking mechanisms are a little cheap but outside of that they haven't broken so you know what well, i can't really complain too much and we've been able to kind of customize the inside and up here i don't know if you can see but i have molly panels or molly bags attached to the molly panel and then i have this ingenious bungee cord with my paper towels on it which i've seen before but i just think it's it's a genius move but Everything is customizable. I have like my utensils and my cookware. And then on that side, I have my air up tools. It's all attached to these side panels. So I've really been able to work with this a lot and it's given me a lot of options, a lot of solutions. It can be used as a bed. So, so far with the smart cap, I'm super happy, but there are some things that I want to talk about that I want to do with the smart cap. So with the smart cap, there's, this isn't an issue with it whatsoever, but this is all blank space. And if you guys, know or you watch any of the other videos you know that i installed the rhino rack pioneer platform system with the backbone on top of my hardtop so i drilled through my hardtop and originally i had a smaller tent that's my dog hey banks what's up dude um originally i had a different tent i had a smitty built overlander and it's and it was smaller than the eye camper i have up there currently so i was able to utilize all of this space up here. I had a roam box, I had my traction boards, I had my um, shovel, I had my high lift jack, all of the recovery essential stuff and then whatever was in the box of stuff that I just wouldn't need all the time. Well, the smart cap being so big, it hangs over and it really eliminates a lot of space on that rack. And also, I have to have the eye camper moved back over the smart cap here and I don't love the way it looks but it's functional so what I'm thinking is getting rid or at least taking this rack off for now um, I'll, will I bring it back maybe I just don't know yet but the reason I bring all that up is because this area right here 
I need a way to mount my shovel and my axe. The traction board mount that I found is just, it's too big. I wouldn't be able to use these locks. I wouldn't be able to get into it. And that is literally useless for me because I get into it all the time. So I know a company out there makes an axe and a shovel mount. If you know what that company is, leave that in the description because it's something that I need to do to see if I can eliminate the need for that rhino rack. So now we can talk about inside the smart cap and, and kind of what I've done. Um, I have the deck system right here, which most of you guys know. My compressor is mounted over here in this little cubby so I don't have to access it. I got my chuck right here, which makes it super easy for airing up and airing down. Um, and we use this as a bed sometimes when Cohen's with us, so these boxes aren't in here. I got my DeWalt chainsaw. I love that freaking thing. It's so much easier than having to carry gas. But so this net in these boxes, you guys have heard me talk about these boxes maybe a thousand times. The Sterilite 15 gallon industrial grade totes. Um, I have four of them in here right now. And typically this space right here, I just kind of leave open. But these are double sided Velcro to the deck system. Oh, the camera got all crazy. It's heavy. It's a heavy camera. The lens is so heavy. But anyways, so I have these double-sided Velcro to the deck system. And the reason I have it there is so it they don't move around when I'm traveling. I'm shaking it, probably making a lot of noise. There's a train. I apologize. But this is just for additional gear that we carry that I don't want to keep in here. Our hammocks, um, shoes, camera gear, food. We got a food box and a dishes and utensil box up there. So everything I have in here, I just kind of leave here. I never take this stuff out um, unless we need to put the mattress in. But it's been a super awesome solution for us being able to carry a lot of additional stuff um, in a very organized manner. If you're new to overlanding or you've been doing this for a while, I'm switching arms. It's the just keeping track of all your stuff and not letting it become a complete rat's nest. It's really hard to do. It takes practice. You have to make sure you put your stuff back after you get done using it, using it. And if you have an 11 year old son, nothing ever gets put back. But this is what I've come up with because I can simply tell to him, put that back in the box you got it out of, or put that back here, put that back there. So this is something that I came up with that was awesome. It's been great for us. Um, I'm gonna keep it here, but I wanted to show you guys that because I don't think I've done much about it or talked about it. And it's a really easy solution for you guys to be able to kind of organize your gear. I'll leave links in the description for some of the stuff. If you have any comments or questions, just leave them down below and uh, I'll get to them as soon as I can. But that's, that's kind of what we got set up back here. And honestly, it works fantastic for us. Okay, so that brings us up to the eye camper. So the only complaints that I have about the eye camper are the mattress. I'll try to show you. Here's the mattress. This is the piece that kind of goes up front. It's fine for me. If you're a bigger guy, it's not gonna be fine. Um, but the biggest issue is I have no way to carry my um, my bedding and my pillows. I have to put it in another like cinch sack and then I throw that in the gladiator, I throw it in the back, and it just takes up tons of room. You gotta think if you have your, me, my wife, Cohen, we all have pillows, we all have blankets, that adds up really, really quick. And it becomes a huge pain and you have to move it around all the time. So I've wanted to find a way to get my stuff to fit in here. Um, somebody left an awesome comment that said, hey, try the X-Peds. X-Peds are deflatable air mattresses, but they're super comfortable, they're a little expensive. So what I did is I ordered two of them, um, a full and a single, and that should take up all the space in here. And after we're done for the night, and we're taking off on the next day, I can just deflate them and then I could put my bedding, most of my bedding up here. Um, when you flip the eye camper closed on itself, there's two slots by the ladder that I can always fit pillows in. So there's two pillows. Um, it's really just about trying to find the best way for me to maximize this space. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'll put those in the description. If you have an eye camper, you just wanna check them out. They are a little pricey, but I'll pay the price to be able to have more of my stuff available to me um, and it just makes packing and even if I had to take a little extra time but my gladiator is not full of garbage and junk then it's definitely worth it for me. So that's what we're going to do here. It may be helpful for you guys. Um, somebody left that comment on YouTube and it was a great comment so I appreciate that but that is what we're going to do to kind of solve that 
bedding situation, the problem that we always have. So one thing that I think absolutely deserves attention, the Milestar Patagonia mud trains. I hate them. I mean, I despise them. They were good for like 10,000 miles. And now I feel like, it sounds like I'm driving a tractor trailer down the road. Like, I mean, my wife can hear me coming down the road from a half a mile away. She knows I'm coming home because she can hear the tires just humming. I know mud terrains do that. Um, these were not like that in the beginning. I raved about how quiet they were. They were actually quieter than my wife's all terrains on her Jeep. But things have since changed. So the mud terrains are gone. I'm getting rid of these things. I am going to go with a different tire. I think I'm going to go with the BFG KO2. Go back to it. I love those tires. They've been fantastic. No, they're not mud terrains, but you know, I drive this thing more on the road. But still, you know, I don't want to sacrifice. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But that's where I think I'm at. Um, but th these things, they got to go. All right. So that pretty much does it for us. Um, we're about to be headed out on a trip to. Joshua Tree National Park, Kofa National Wildlife Refuge, um, headed to Tucson to see Grandma and Grandpa, um, and we're going to be taking the Subaru. So there'll be a lot more of that stuff coming, but I just didn't want you to think that the Gladiator was going to be left in the dust. Quite honestly, this will probably be the last video for the year, and maybe for all of January. We're going to take a break and just hang out, be with family. It's the holidays, so... Whatever you celebrate, um, we celebrate Christmas, so have a Merry Christmas. And we hope that you guys enjoyed the video. We will catch up with you guys here in a couple weeks. Your face is all dirty. You just woke up from your nap. She's ready to go on a good adventure, and it's going to be a good one. So thank you guys for watching. If it was helpful, please feel free to leave a comment. Have a Merry Christmas, and we will see you on the next one. Say bye. See ya.